And welcome to our show, the Geeks Aware Podcast, where we talk about video games, movies, TV, shows, comic books, technology, and TLDR, the Internet of Things. I'm your host, Anthony, and there's also another host named, we, we call him Bill. Hello, I am a Bill. Hello, Bill. Hi. And uh, if you'd like to contact us, you can do so at, by emailing us at geeksarewired at gmail.com. You can also call us or text us at 801-896-4335 or 801-896-GEEK. And if you can also support us on Patreon if you want to. You can get uh, an extra show as a, as a perk of being a Patreon. So it's called the Geeks are Wireless Show. It's what? secret. I'm not supposed to say anything. No, it's it's a secret. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's a secret. <laughs> it's a secret. Anyways, uh, you can uh, find us at patreon.com slash geeks are wired. Hooray. Yay. Oh, you also get the podcast early if you're a Patreon supporter. Yeah. So there's that. Mm -hmm. All right. What are we rolling into? We're rolling right into Scoob. What's Scoob? Scoob is the full length, uh, was going to be a theatrical release Scooby Doo movie. I kind of wondered if it had to do with Scooby Doo. So I received, I'm part of WB's little mailing. You said was? Group. Was. It was supposed to be coming out in theaters. Is it just not even a thing anymore? So that's what the. Oh. Yeah, so I got an email from them stating that they had done a survey with all their WB survey people. Yeah. And people who were like, the majority of members watch sports content, other interesting things, movies, entertainment, try to fill the gap. And they oh. had reasons on why, you know, like 60% of members watch more news than before, about 50% more movies. But they're trying to like fill their everyone's trying to fill their day with stuff. So WB was like, you know, we can do this video on demand. Premium video on demand, never been released to theaters, was intended to be released to theaters, and we're just gonna skip the theater right now. And let you rent it for twenty dollars in certain places, which I think they may have pulled some of those, because I most of the places I'm looking at now don't have it for rent. Unless it's not going to be available to rent until the day of, which will be the 15th of May. and Or you can pre-order it, or buy it even, for $25. Hmm. Which is not a terrible price. So, you know, compared to how much it goes to the, to go to the movies, you know, easily 10 you know, depending on the movie and all that. Like I say, anywhere from 5 to $20 a ticket. Renting hmm. it at $20 is a reasonable price. If you have more than just you watching it, it is an extremely reasonable price. At the twenty-five, it's not that bad of a price. Like to own it? Yeah, to own it. You only own the digital copy. Yeah. And I was seeing I think Target had it for like seventeen, but so, I didn't see a release date on that D V D. Hold up. Was uh I can't remember her name. The brunette? Um, Velma. Velma? Yeah. Was she always that short? Yeah, she was kind of shorter. And I don't remember her being that short. Daphne, Maybe it's just more Daphne pronounced here. Yeah, Daphne, Fred, and Shaggy were kind of tall. She's not as short as Scooby on all fours. but well, Daphne's not even that much bigger than her. And Daphne, I think, has heels on? Usually. It's hard to tell. Anyways... <laughs> yeah, so there, there's, so there's going to be all this so you can own it. There, we'll have links in the show notes of places you can buy it. The other thing, depending on when you listen to this, there is a... Not, uh, there's actually... So th they're making this a bigger event than you know, even normal. There is the you know party pack. There is, there's going to be a you know, Twitter event. There's you, know, you, you, you get to watch the red carpet. So there's all of these things that are actually bringing people into this movie release. So this will be a worldwide re movie release. So this is interesting because this is basically one of the 
Well, it's not the first time that something like this was done because Disney also did that with the. Uh, I don't remember what it was called. They did that just recently, though. Was with it, the movie? Was it Trolls Two? Are they the Trolls? It might 2? have been Trolls. Okay, I know Trolls Two got released early. Uh, when there's some other stuff later in the show that we're going to talk about with it. Okay. On how things are going, but what I really think is interesting on this is that. WB actually, like I said, they sent out surveys to ask people, hey, what are you doing? What do you think about these concepts? And they came to this decision that this is a good idea to do. And I think it's really cool how they're bringing so much into it. It's not just like, oh, I'm going to go to the movie. I'm going to watch it. It'll be whatever. It's, you know, there's a Scooby-Doo party pack. Yeah. Which I, and you can dig through their website and everything, but I was going to link it in. But it has like, little cutouts for the you know the mystery machine the mask a little mask a scooby-doo uh bracelet cut out there is you can use uh, oh, instagram. yeah you can do instagram and you can have like pu- uh, a puppy scooby-doo sitting on your lap they are like how to make monster burgers scooby-doo cookies and muffins so there's just, like, all these like really you know fun interesting things to like come together with the family or even just friends everyone sets down watches it and i had the music on sorry it's what i had the music on oh okay i I clicked on the the video or the commercial no i clicked on the download your home party pack oh and it had stuff oh yeah there's a the, so their site's also kind of interesting because you don't like scroll down through it. You like click on the triangle at the bottom, but if you want to go up, you have to click on the hamburger menu at the top to go back up. Yeah, and that's why. Yeah, I, you know, like I said, you find these things. That's why I was, like the Scooby Party Pack. It's a PDF. I was going to link directly to it. But there's all these really cool things. They're all like connect the dots for because they're going to have the Blue Falcon in it. Mm-hmm. It's like a really old uh, cartoon, and along with Scooby Doo. So, question. Top. Did you mute your FaceTime? Oh, probably not. Because I can hear like an echo and it's... Is it bothering you? I mean, once I figured it out, I, I was fine. But anyways, oh. what's Bork, uh, BarkBox? BarkBox. Yeah. I scrolled Where? all the way down to the bottom and I can't get back up, so... I'm like clicking it, you have to click now. on the hamburger menu to go back up. Oh. Yeah, they make it... The website's not very intuitive no but to be fair they probably put it together quickly because they well no well the scoob movie part yeah never mind i was meaning back the the watch scoob which never mind that's like a static page so there's nothing much there (laughs) i mean it's i I like the stuff on it because it's it's got that parallax effect is that what that is I'm not sure. Like if you if you're on the very top of it, it will move. Like if you move your mouse around, it moves the characters back and forth. Oh, oh yeah, that was actually really interesting with it. But yeah, so there, there's some interesting stuff on it. It's just I feel like the the up arrow there should be an up arrow and not just a down arrow. But maybe they want to force you to get all the way to the bottom. Yeah, and I never actually went to the bottom. I think I kind of like went down a few and I was like, oh man, I wanted to see that last thing. And it was, oh, no, that's not what I want. I, how do I, and then I like went back to the spot I really wanted. And because I was like, I don't want to move forward. I kind of like never made it further. Oh, I see. Oh, and you were right. Parallax effect. Cool. Yeah. I wonder what it looks like on a phone. I wonder if it uses the accelerometer. Where's my phone? That'd be interesting. I will look. Yeah, might have to check that out myself. Scoob dot movie. It was oh no, I know why it wasn't autocomplete. Why isn't it autocomplete? No, I mean it wasn't autocomplete. Okay, it does not use the accelerometer. No. Lame. It's so sad. You have to use your moose to move I mean, it around. The moose doesn't even work either. If I were to plug a mouse into my phone, it would probably would though. Well, actually, it's a it's a the mouse is supported on uh, iPad OS, but I don't know that it is an iOS, even though they're the same operating system. Curious. 
Anyways. Technically, they're not, remember? No, well, no, they are. They're just it's branded not differently. OS. It's iOS. I know that. <laughs> but, anyways. It is the same, but it's also not. I do so, wonder how much of this they were planning to do before the pandemic. I think they were planning on doing some of this because there's still like the social media stuff, having the Scooby selfie and all that. It it seems like it just seems natural stuff with Snapchat and Instagram that just are features that would just make sense. The the party pack maybe not so much because you're not you know it, it, that is more for having friends over to watch a movie. So like you're doing you're hosting a party. Yeah. So they they may have released some of this stuff as in, you know, to the theaters. Like I could see stuff like, you know, I've seen stuff like this at the theaters where you have kids all sitting there and like, oh, color in Scooby Doo and all this other stuff. I've seen, you know, that makes sense. Yeah. Or advertising, like, hey, look at this. This is really cool. How to draw the mystery machine? How to draw Scoob? Well, that's cool. Now I know why you have like three different. One, two, three, four, five different scoop things. Yeah, because they're all different points of, you know, they, I, I looked at while looking through things. I was like, you know, there, here it is, you know, here, here's the trailer. Here's the, here's the website, but the website's kind of like not, yeah, there's a lot. But, you know, if you want to buy the movie, there's a link. You know, I was going to make sure there was a link to like, hey, these, and it's not like, oh, go to this location go buy it on insert insert company they actually were like they did really well with it and they're like go buy it on amazon prime yeah it's on a lot of places yeah it's all over it's on everything everything but netflix well netflix you don't buy movies i know but and it's not on hulu if you can go with that like that's not that thing that i don't care that's yeah well places that you can buy movies is on this list and if you do it right you can knock out if you link your movies anywhere your voodoo your fandango now your amazon your microsoft and your google and apple i think that's it yep you can actually get this on everything but i have no idea what r-o-w-h is Best seats in the house. Yeah, actually, that is one I no clue. Row eight. Yeah, could be. I'm pretty sure that's what that's supposed to be. Probably. Row eight. It's a movie startup. Streaming movie startup. Row eight. Up to two dollars off your first minute. So, it's a it's a subscription, a home movie subscription thing. Interesting. And you get. You still have to buy the movies or rent them or whatever, but. Like up to two dollars off your first movie, two dollars off new releases, dollar off new titles. So. Yeah, this does bring up an interesting point though on wh- how movie releases are going to be in the future. Oh yeah, it totally. Cause, like I don't, they could it could get to the point where there's just a you pay a subscription, and you just get. Like I get, I think it's not going to be like a industry wide subscription. It's probably going to be, oh, you have a universal subscription, you can watch universal movies or. A DC subscription, which I'd be okay with, as long as they also had the option of just renting it the one time instead of having to. Yeah. Instead of having to subscribe to Netflix to watch your movies. Yeah, but on the other hand, where there's a lot of like movies get released on certain months, like certain packs. Yeah. So you could just pay for the summer, get a bunch of movies, and then be done with it, and then come around November, December, pay again, get more. And that's why, uh, was it the Movie Pass and was try- it was doing that? If you sign up and you cancel, you can't sign back up because they knew that the people would only yeah. want to sign up during summer or holiday times. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Oh, but but also like I was saying, like with those, so if you link all those things together, and I think it's I'm not sure if it's movies anywhere or Voodoo that's the major connector between them. But if you, and it might be both of them. If you connect those two to everybody else, you buy. And I know if you buy it movies anywhere, and maybe Voodoo. I'm not sure about Fandango because those three are the kind of big ones. You buy that, and everything's linked up. You have it on all of them. 
Interesting. Yeah. So I, when I buy my movies, I tend to go to move. I, I'll price check a little bit, but I'll tend to buy. I'll tend to make sure that I, I gotta double check who it is, but I I know movies anywhere. If you buy it on that, and everything's linked up, you get it on them all. If I I have it on my. I'll get it on Google. I'll get it on Vudu. I'll get it on Fandango. I'll get it on Amazon. Pretty sure I get it on Apple as well. So I buy it once, and I have it on multiple different options, which is a big thing, especially when Amazon and Google end up fighting with each other. And this has even worked because there was a one that uh, I forgot Voodoo bought or Voodoo had hiccups with back in the day, and they ended up shutting down. But as long as everything was linked up to Voodoo, your movie stayed connected. You still had your movie. So like all my movies that I've ever connected between everybody – are still there. Like, they're permanently there. So once they're in, they're in. Interesting. Yeah, uh, going back to this PDF, like, I'm looking at it, it's, it the, the amount of stuff, like, especially where it says, like, watch the movie exclusively on May 15th on every single uh, page yeah. makes me think that this was something that they were, like you said, we're going to give the theaters or something and just, like, hand them out. Mm-hmm. And because, like, if you were to print this on your home computer, it's not going to get as near enough like definition, and you're gonna you're gonna waste a lot of blue ink. <laughs> you just have a really good printer, or and also you know, make sure you have extra ink, or a, or a laser printer. Yeah, I'm actually thinking about laser printing the mystery machine part, <laughs> so I can put it together because I kind of like that. Yeah. See, that's the other it's, thing. It's you can dumb, but one page at a time. Or that's the other thing. If you have yeah. multiple kids, you're gonna print this book like five times. Well, probably. And you always can just print it black and white. But since some stuff's starting to open back up, you could take it to like Staples or something, and then yeah. you could print it high quality. True. They'll pay or more, but it's worth you could, it. You could just you know send it off and have it mailed to you. Yeah, that's a thing too. But uh, May fifteenth is. Uh, Right. This the, well, as of the, it's the day the no, the podcast is normally released, but by the time the podcast is normally released, it is night, and this event will be over. Cupcakes. Yeah, I know. Okay, when they first make the Scooby head on the cupcake, it looks like a deer. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, you know, so, so I guess with that, then it uh, kind of goes into what the other stuff I was talking about. So, this is smart marketing, I think. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Anyways, sorry, go ahead. No, it's all right. They, but so this goes into Universal is also working this way, and they're starting to talk about releasing their movies on video on demand early, which is making AMC mad because AMC is the number one theater chain in the world, and they oh. are like, no, because they realize if this happens. They're not going to be, you know, they're not going to have any movies to show, and they need all of the movies to be released into theaters. So they can still have this, like, because I'm one person that's going to like to go to the movie theater still, just because of the experience. And, like, like to be honest, like, a nice, like, action-y movie yes. where it's got lots of, like, bass and, like, stuff like that, I'm going to want to see it in the theater because the experience is just going to be much better. Or a good sci-fi movie. Yeah, or a good sci-fi movie. But, like, a comedy, probably watch it at home. Oh, I always already do that. So, but, like, I, I, if they swing it right, they could still have that audience. They might not be able to charge as much anymore, which mm-hmm. is probably what they're really worried about. But but they also, remember, they the majority of the money go, does go to the theaters go to, you know, for the first little bit. So AMC doesn't start making, they make money off of the concessions. And the longer the movie's in theaters. Mm-hmm. So they want a movie to stay in theaters as long as it can so they can start making the larger percentage of it. So if that happens, then they'll probably have to reevaluate that contract. <laughs> yeah. Because that's... They're, they're talking about cutting off Universal, like not playing Universal movies because of this. That's a, a tough, uh, tough sell. <laughs> I know. Well, AMC has the power... Because oh, they... they're the number one theater chain in the world, Universal has the power because they're the provider of the movies. Yeah. 
It's like, yeah, you can talk about cutting them off, but if they're planning on doing the whole online thing, like just releasing it online, mm-hmm. uh, cutting AM- AMC cutting off Universal is not going to do anything. All it's going to do Universal. is like, and it's just going to hurt AMC. Yeah, and you know, and, and then the the other ones like Regal and um, uh, I forgot what the other. There's yeah, you know, the one that there's a theater chain that. Um, I want to say Texas something. I forget what it is. They have they usually do specialty showings of special movies. They the makes these theaters actually like like because they're willing to play these movies. They did it with uh, Netflix release the uh, oh, what was that the gangster movie, The Irishman. Did they only do like? Did they only do that so that it could get a Grammy? It, they did it so it could have a chance. <laughs> and that's something else that's changing this year. Yeah, I, I didn't. That's cool. Yeah, and they're like, oh, this is going to be a one-year thing. No, no. A lot of people are going like, this is going to be a thing. It's just like E3 getting canceled. It's It might happen still, but it's not going to be the same. Well, even with it being, well, these things being canceled, but also people may open it up. Like, the other stuff that's happening is Apple, the developer conference. That is going... We can go to that. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we can't touch the phones or do anything, but we, you know, it's not just watching it online, but we can actually, they're going to make it so the average person can go through and kind of get ideas about how the next OS uh, for Apple is going to be. Which will be an interesting experience. Yeah. And I kind of wonder how they're going to do, do it. When is that? I, I can look it up. Uh, what is it? WWDC. Yeah. June twenty second. Well, there you go. We'll have to go to that. I don't even know what day of the week that is. Jeez, this has been going on since eighty seven. For their own. Yeah. I didn't know they were doing it that long. I see. June twenty second. Do they? Do they the... Monday. That's. I don't like that. I mean, it's it was last time too. Yeah. Remember, I we we I watched it at work. Okay. <laughs> Actually, no, I more listened to it at work. Yeah, no, I've done it was, stuff like that. I was doing more listening than working, though. I think. I don't remember. I did take a lot of notes, though. Oh, well, we were able to talk about it, so this will be interesting to see how it. You put see it how on. it works. Putting it on the show notes. Yep. Happening. Okay. It's done. Cue. My keyboard shortcuts. So, wait, so, but yeah, because though AMC is fighting with Universal, which then, you know, obviously no one really wins with this. And AM, I started looking at the shares. You know, somebody was talking about AMC shares and how they were acting and. Did I, did I put that part in the... I threw that part in the show notes too. The actual like stock prices. Yeah. Uh, it's that, been doing better since the pandemic first like really hit the US. Yeah. Oh, that was the other thing I was really interested in. It's like, it was over the last three months. Who was it? March? Well, 17th, it started hitting a low. Its lowest was April 13th, where it, it started, was $2 a share. Yeah, it started diving on February 20, yeah. 20th. So it, it's not done any major recovery, but it started going up. It kind of spiked out. And apparently it spiked out earlier this week because Amazon was talking. There was rumors of Amazon buying it. Buying AMC? Yeah. Like, were they real rumors? Or? The thing is, no one's 100% sure on it, whether it was, which then goes with, you know, especially, and that's where, so I didn't realize this, especially where everyone's all like, oh, you know, this year, you know, we hate TikTok because it's Chinese owned and all that. Well, we found out China owns that. The richest person in China owns AMC theaters. Really? Yes. Hmm. Did not know that. They're, uh, so it's the Dillian Wanda Group. Wanda is a real estate entertainment conglomerate owned by China's richest man, Wang 
I'm going to botch this. Probably shouldn't say Jin, it then. <laughs> Jinlin? Jinlin? Ah, uh, whatever. He's the Chinese richest man. And you can find him in the show notes. Yes. Since we can't pronounce his name. Yeah. And all the other companies that China owns. We're going to throw that in the show notes. Uh, so, so that one, that would be Amazon, an American company, buying a Chinese company. But it could work out. It could work out well for them. For both you know, AMC, obviously, they, at least then they have, you know, they they can just walk away from this. Amazon, they're a production company. Slightly, they are in they are in a hundred different places. So this could work for them by making movies, producing, you know, showing the movies in theaters, working with other companies. And kind of doing what they currently do with movies where so they would have both the movie theater experience and the after buying yeah. the movie or renting. And they could even do a combination of like, oh, if you buy this ticket, you get this movie. Like you have pre ordered it. Oh. And if your account's linked up, you pay with your Amazon card or you pay with your Amazon account, done. As soon as the movie comes available, it's on your account. Interesting. Yeah, like they could do all sorts of things like that. Though it's, you know, it might stretch them thin. It could, but it is, you know, this might, I have uh, always thought that theaters would eventually be, you know, old fashioned things that people don't go to anymore, eventually. Or you'll have the ones where it's like, it's either dinner and a show or you get snacks or beer. Like, it'll yeah. be a, more of us yeah more of an experience true which you know, makes it interesting again and we've talked about some of those on previous episodes yeah and they are they're way more interesting you you go to a, a, a dinner restaurant you go to a, a bar that has this, these theaters built into it that's why amc started doing the you know major amc experience stuff because which... people want to go to that that might actually like save them on this because I think they're the may, they're one of the only major movie chains that's done that. I think maybe Regal. I'm not sure. At least AMC, but there's yeah, a lot of others. AMC advertises out there. it a lot. So it could be really, really interesting. It it would yeah, but then it's an experience, and then it's like okay, yeah, I'll go watch next star wars movie because it's a big action movie and i also get to buy food there and have dinner and not care about anything mm -hmm. but there's also the better ar and vr technology gets the I, we're back on the why am i going to the theater yeah if we can get to vr like legit vr not just like put this over my head vr where you're like fully immersed then yeah. Okay. V movie theaters are just gone. Because that's, that's... You're not going to have a better experience than that. Let's... I'm bringing them in then. What are you bringing in? So, there's also a... Speaking of the experience, obviously this is... Mojo. Well, their concept is... Yeah, it's, it's Mojo AR. They are looking at... It's AR, augmented reality, contact lenses. Oh yeah. So they're they've been raising money. They've got a bunch of crowdfunding they've been able to put together. They are glass contact lenses. But what you're able to do is you're able to move your eye around and trigger things. You don't have to say anything. You don't have to you just it, it's more of you know, you look at these things, at least at the oh. moment. It's currently I think they said eighteen thousand uh, pixels per square inch, but they are working on trying to get it into, I think, 24, 25,000. So it'd be more like per square inch. more retina than more retina like, at least. Like yeah. retina type displays is what I'm meaning here. Yeah. So what's cool about this is the way that you describe that is they're basically macros. Like you program macros into that, and then you <laughs> look at this one thing and it triggers it. Well, that's the way. Well, that's the way. Uh, Which Tom is cool. Kind of explained it. I like that. I mean, there's. I could see some other things of 
you know, because they kind of, you know, Mojo's website did exp- uh, show some stuff where you know, just you looking around, like, you know, somebody's on a horse and they just start riding and they, they start identifying like fence posts and all this other stuff. So you start, they start seeing things. It's able to zoom in on stuff. So they're saying they, you know, obviously this technology could take a while, but they want to get it out before the 10 or 20 year ex- expectation is. Which would be cool. Yeah. And honestly, 10 to 20 years is a realistic number for the way technology kind of advances and the way this is going to go. But they have working betas right now. That's the impressive thing. Like there are the people have actually tried these contacts on. Which means they look scary thick. Yes. They're glass. <laughs> they're they're old school contact lenses. Uh. Like super old school. And they you are not sleeping in these. You well, you're not supposed to... to sleep in contacts anyways. You are very not sleeping in these. <laughs> also, it sounds like it's wireless charging. So when you take them out and you put them in your case, that's when they charge. Yeah, I mean, how else would they? There's no other way they'd be able to charge, really. So I was thinking about that before I read that part. They are in your eye, mm-hmm. which means they are exposed to light. Mm-hmm. You could solar charge. You could. You your eye produces heat. You could, it, you know, that that transition between you know, kind of like the Matrix type of you know stupidity, but your body produces heat. You're transferring heat into energy mm-hmm. through the context. You're blinking your eyes by the movement of your eye eyelids. Movement of your eye, you know, creates friction, creates whatever else, you know, and also, you know, it's not like heavy friction, but Friction happens. Yeah. It's just, and it's just enough to create a bit of a charge. To be honest, these are like, they're, they're not going to hold that much charge anyways because of the what they are. So yeah, it could, theor- like, you could put just like a little tiny, like, solar array towards the top where you can't even see it. Mm-hmm. And that'd probably be enough, honestly. Maybe. Yeah. Compared with other stuff too, but. I mean, that's what I was thinking before I read about the you know wireless charging. Yeah. There, there is possibilities for this to happen, but then it goes into the possibilities for abuse, meaning that it it's in your eye for an extended period of time. Contact yeah, yeah. Already, if they're they're in, they can cause tons of damage, tons of issues. Even if they could get away from the glass and make it a, a nice thin plastic, it. There's still problems because even contacts that can stay in your eyes for long, lengths of time breathe, so they they don't they're not as not as bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I yeah. So while they could do charging stuff like that, where you have to take it out anyways, there I don't think they're going to invest too much into that. Yeah, until they can get to the point where they like there is a Futurama scene of this where there's an iPhone. Yeah. If they can get to something like that, that would probably be the the best way because then it's just like an implant. Yeah, it's just an implant, and at that point they'd probably be able to like siphon energy off of your just like you. through electrolysis or something or something yeah. like that. But doing that inside of your eye would be kind of sketch. Hopefully, I'm we still can get installing things in your body is kind of sketch because you're what if. You know, the next upgrade. What if this thing has flaws? Come on, there's there's fake hearts that have technical flaws nowadays. Yes. Yeah. But so if we ever get to that point, I would hope that there is either a way to biologically clone the thing that you're augmenting, or there's a very good mechanical replacement. Yeah. And security. Lots and lots of security. Yeah, sick well security's gonna get ramped up real fast too because of quantum stuff we're gonna have sort to rethink of. that no we're, well we're gonna have to rethink security sort of there i've, I've been there, there's been some interesting stuff that i've been finding out that we because we under started understanding quantum we started building up better encryptions which actually would challenge quantum like everything nowadays is not completely breakable from quantum but it could it would you know a lot of stuff still is but we've started looking at a lot more new ways to make better encryptions 
Um, the other one, oh, what was it? They used lava lamps. Yeah, I've heard of that one. one. Yeah, that one was pretty cool. I forget who it was. But it was really cool because it's super random. You can't, it is truly random. I'm going to look it up. Because I think and, I can just put lava lamp random. Or random. lava lamp encryption. It's Cloudflare. Ah, yes. So they have really, really good encryption because they, they have a camera that watches lava lamps to base what their encryption is. Uh-huh. And it's like, wow, that's really cool. Because it's completely unpredictable. I mean, everything's predictable, but it would take a lot of computations to predict that. Yes. Goes back on predicting everything. Which is probably theoretically possible if you know all of the start, all of the current inputs. Yeah. Which is cosmic rays, Earth. You have to know everything (laughs) about everything. Yeah. And so once you get to that point, then you could potentially predict the future, but you'd have to do it faster than the future can happen, too. Well, yeah. Which is right now not feasible at all. And you also could technically predict the past. Well, I wouldn't say, you know, you right could, now it's You could re-simulate the past. Yeah. Which would be another really? cool thing, actually. In fact, I think that's cooler, personally. Have you seen Devs? No. So we're kind of getting into that. It's a TV show. Oh, wait. Yeah. I think someone told me about it. Maybe it was you. It's a good possibility. Interesting. So that's what it is. Is they they make a machine that can. Oh. It, it's like explained right in or fairly early in episode one. So I'm kind of slightly spoiling it, but eh. only a smidgen. But they they make a machine that what they do is they can look at one atom and then from that atom. They're able to see what how it reacts with the atoms around it, and then you start expanding. And the further you expand, like how each atom reacts upon each other, and the more you expand, the more you, you information you bring in. At that point, you're able to start really predicting how everything is going to react with each other, and then you're going to be able to uh, look at how everything has reacted with each other. Uh-huh. And I, I kind of like the. Oh, there was another. Oh, I like actually how Westworld is doing it though, because with devs it was very. It seemed very much like the there is it all. They, they really were pushing heavy on this is the fact. A B C will happen. We know this. Mm-hmm. Period. Nothing else. While Westworld seems to be going along the lines of we. Based on your situations and what you do and who you are and all this stuff, we know who you are. And based on these situations, we know with a high probability what you will do. Yeah. And given enough data, I think we could, anybody could do that. Yeah. And But that one with, uh, was that Westworld you said? Yeah. Yeah. So with that, then they are open to the idea of it can change. Like, it's more of a... Like, let's say they had a device that could peer into the future. Hmm. And it wasn't, like, simulating it. It was actually just jumping to it. It was more the idea of, well, that's just, like, a alternate reality. Or that's one solution of infinite solutions. Yeah. So, well, that's not what they're doing. But that's scenarios. Like, yeah. That's, like, a direct analogy to it comparison yeah. i guess so I, th- I think i like that more but the simulation one's cool too just because of what it is yeah so and i can believe that one a little more because that's the other idea why i like a lot of those little tests that go this is the type of person you are and that means okay if i am this type of a person and I will react this particular way in these situations, and I want to go left, if I know if I set these situations up for me properly, I will go left. I will, you know, no matter what, I will have set myself for success to go left. Okay. So the more I know about myself, so but that's the other thing about predictive analytics, the more people, other people know about you, the more they can make you go left. Mm-hmm. 
and that's something a lot of people also mix up is like oh it's ai no it's predictive analytics ai just can do stuff with that along with people but this is just gathering so much information you can generally predict how people will react or how things will react yeah it uses ai to interpret the results doesn't it it can but it doesn't need to yeah it doesn't need to but if you want to have like multiple outcomes or something or if you need to like if you don't have enough data to get a good thing like a good uh prediction you could have an ai i could see that then fill yeah. in some like fudge the data a little bit to get us to get to a certain solution kind of like yeah with that you're it's the same thing with humans can do you you are given all of the information and based on what you know you can fudge and and predict and that's what ai could do if ai is if ai doesn't need to exist to have all the information predicted if you provide this machine all of the information ever period like everything it could predict beginning and end and never bring an ai but the thing is, is you have fed that thing so much information. Like it's just an unrealistically, you know, large amount of mm -hmm. information. It'd be infeasible, really. At the current time, I don't even like. To me, it's just like if you feed it in all the information. Not only do you have to have like all the information about the the universe, like the space time stuff. You also have to be able to store it physically somewhere. <laughs> so unless you can open up like a a small like spatial storage that just like throws into a black hole and makes it to where you can retrieve it, you're not going to be able to physically you're not going to be able to store all that information. It's it's just too much. Well, that's the thing. You never say never. That's the beginning of uh, of invention. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what I mean. So unless they get that spatial stuff. <laughs> that I don't think there's a way to do it. Or they could invent something that we don't think of right now. Or it's one heck of a compression algorithm. Yeah, just you know the way things are the way things are stored that we just don't store it now. Look, go back to like you know the turn of the 20th century and tell them that you're going to put them on ones and zeros. Turn of the century and do what now? Turn of the 20th century. Yeah. And say you know when you know we have records and at the best or what. I get you know tell them that we can store all this information oh. on this teeny tiny little jump drive. Like, even explain exactly how it works. And they're like that. That doesn't make any sense. Nope. And if you want to tell them we can do that, like we can store like a thousand and twenty four on one one byte. Yeah. 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 Ten twenty four. Yeah. Or if you that you can store uh, lots of little numbers on these little things. Yeah. The little, SD cards. SD cards. And this isn't even the little ones. This is the big, the OG ones. Yeah. They make little okay. ones that are this size, though. 128 is what I have in my hand. And that this is actually kind of funny because at work I had a conversation with someone who, I guess around the time that he started coding, there was like, like 10 megabyte hard drives were thousands of dollars yeah. around that time. Well, maybe I think it might have been a little earlier than that, but still. And now you can get like a 12 terabyte for 150, maybe $200, maybe 300. I don't remember how much they are, but it's just nuts. I think it's, it's about a buck a gig right now, isn't it? To the Amazons. <laughs> ah. Why can't just go to the Bings? 12 terabyte hard drive. Well, you can get an external for 219. Or you can get... 12 terabyte? Yeah. Wait, how much again? 219. Wow, we've actually right. dropped in price. Well, this one's on sale. This thing's normally 250. It's a WD drive. However, if you want like a NAS drive, like a network attack storage drive, which for something this big, you probably want it anyways, <laughs> it's $304. Was that an SSD or was that a... No... An that SSD really of this size would be insanely expensive. Maybe I'm thinking SSDs are dropping in price. S they are, especially if you get the NVMEs, like the M.2 okay. drives. Because mm -hmm. I got a terabyte in mine, and I don't think it, like, yeah, it's a $180 right now, but wait. 
Is that a terabyte? Yeah, that's a terabyte. And I think you can get them up to... You can get two terabyte ones, but I can't. It doesn't show the price on it because it's currently not available. So. But yeah. So SSDs are still pretty, like, not pretty expensive compared to, like, ten, five, ten years ago. But still more expensive than normal hard drives, and they probably will be forever, but... Apparently, a couple of years ago, Samsung was working on a 30.72 terabyte SSD. Yeah, I, I I could see that. The only the the thing with uh, SSDs like these is they have like a finite life. Hard drives have that too, but it's a little more variable. Whereas SSDs, you basically are guaranteed a certain amount of life. And the other thing is SSDs are more susceptible to uh, bit flips than uh, coast or than uh, old standard. So they're, uh, they're they're more susceptible to bit rot. No, no, bit flips. No, I think bit rot is. I think that's also bit rot. No, no okay. What is bit rot? And I'll explain bit flip. <sighs> well, bit flip just sounds like bits flip from like cosmic rays or just like stray electronic uh, electricity. Well, it is you, 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 the first part that you said that is correct. Okay, is the cosmic rays pass through so many things, and are and are constantly flying around us, and they're actually getting more active recently, especially in our digital age. And they will pass through your computer and flip a bit from a zero to a one, or vice versa, which has made elections have numbers of people that voted by an unrealistic number have caused playing so many issues they actually have backup multiple backups of the computer based on them now because a bit flip in a computer or in a, on a, in a computer on an airplane could actually bring the airplane down <laughs> so there's these and this is a thing that we actually have to deal with nowadays and yeah. more and more and the smaller that data gets packed together it's gonna get worse and worse get, yeah and, and we can't really do much with these like lead boxes and all this may or may not, but we can't, we're at, they're random enough. So at this point we can't really grab them. We usually see the effects afterwards. Yeah. And that's if we get lucky to catch it, look in the right spots. There's a error correcting RAM and it's for one of these reasons too. So, mm -hmm. Oh yeah. RAM is super susceptible to this. Yeah. But that's because it's like RAM, you remove the power, you lose everything. Yeah. So it's much more susceptible well, to... It's also, it, it, the digital stuff is more. The you know, analog is not at all possible, and the platter hard drives are a little bit less. They're still digital, but they don't bit flip near as hard as SSDs. Yeah, it's for the hard drives, it's magnetism, so... Mm -hmm. They energize or magnetize certain pits, and that's how they work. But uh, so bit rot, uh, basically, like the definition I just pulled up on Google by googling it was, it's just the slow degradation of in the performance and integrity of data stored on storage media. So um, there's other names: bit decay, data rot, data decay, silent corruption. So it's just corruption that can happen to your data if you don't check it periodically and it's it'll happen on anything basically so and if you like the pictures that it shows on here are just like you can tell what the image was uh, for the most part actually but you'll be missing a lot of the color values and then sometimes there's another picture here where the top is there but the rest of it's just a bunch of like strips of color because the rest of the data, like too much data got removed. And so the image render is, I think, guessing at that point. And it, it can't do as good of a, a job. So, yeah. Data is fun. Yeah. Data, data rot's even funner. But yeah, uh, they're going to start to have uh, 20 terabyte hard drives too, maybe. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I heard about this on a Linus Tech Tip podcast, but. There, he was kind of saying that it's too big just because at this point, like if you have a hard drive that dies, like a 12 terabyte one, and like if, if it dies in your array of 
like Great Array, it's yeah. going to take days to rebuild it just because of how much data it is. Yeah. And so by doing a 20 terabyte one, it's going to take about a week probably. And during that time, like while you're restoring, like rebuilding a disk, your other disk is much, your other disks are much more likely to fail. Mm-hmm. So. I see that. And that's, that's. And also, f- SSDs can only be written to so many times technically. Yeah. That's why you, you really do not defrag them. No, and so. But, there's no need to anyways on SSDs. No, there's absolutely no need to. And you don't want to do a... Like, the only time you'd want to do a full format is if you really wanted the data gone. Like, if you were giving away the SSD or something yeah. to someone, you might do it then because otherwise your data could be retrieved. But other than that, yeah, you, you don't want to... You don't want to do more writes to it than you need to. So if you're doing a lot of writes you're better and you don't want to you don't necessarily and you want fast performance you're better off using like an octane drive or a ram a ram card thing so bit flip i link to a radio lab it's another podcast they do a great job you also can read it in the transcript if you want but they do a really really good job of explaining about <clears throat> bit flip and how Back in 2003, it really messed with an election. <laughs> Which election? A, B- a Belgium election. It, it just, like, it returned, like, this person won, but they won by, like, four times the number of voters. Nice. So they did, it was like, uh, wait, what? And then, so they had to look into it. And this is, Were they able to that, fix it? They know it exists. Hmm. Because the thing is, you couldn't... Because well, once the initial bit flipped, it kind of did a multiplier effect and really messed with things. And really, all they could do is like look at the outcome of it and be like, all right, so this is why this happened. Well, because generally, like, if they... Those computer systems, a lot of times, will have, like, a log... So they might have been able to reconstruct it or something, or reverse the damages. That's why I was asking. No, oh, they there was. I recommend listening to it. Some of that. Okay. <laughs> it's really really interesting. Because error correcting RAM does this because bit flips happen quite can happen quite often, especially in like server applications. Well, so the error correcting more and more nowadays because of the cosmic yeah. race. But yeah, so Article. that's yeah that's why servers like you want to have error correcting RAM because it can detect this for the most part. It's still probably going to not work all the time, but it'll work most of the time. So what would be even more fun is if we had like a, the trinaries like we used to have. The trinaries? Yeah, where it was, you could have a negative one, zero, or one. Ooh. And by used to have, I mean there was a computer system that had it. Back whenever computers took up whole rooms. So, but it, that became, you know, not very practical because when are you going to need a negative one? <laughs> I'm sure somebody could figure out some reason. Well, I mean, the, the nice thing about doing that would be instead of just two states, you have three. So you would need less bits or with less, I think it's called trits actually. I gotta look it up now. Okay, Tritz is an ice cream. Cool. <laughs> I was almost slightly worried that you were not gonna get something else. Oh yeah, if you uh, yeah, don't misspell that. Don't leave what? out. Don't leave out a letter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, I was right. The ternary number numeral system. You're gonna have to throw in the show notes. Yeah. It's also called base. It's just base three. I know it's just like one trit is equivalent to log three base two, which is about one point five eight four nine six bits of information. A trinary. Yeah, trinary. I said ternary. I meant trinary. I was like, that's sounding weird still. So a trinary. But this also... All right, I found it. 
This also has the word ter- ternary in there too. Yeah. yeah, that's the and that's what the wiki article is going to say. That is in the show notes. So yeah, so if you have a uh, ten numbers from one to in standard ternary, ternary two, binary two. Oh, okay. So this one, the ternary, I think is zero one two instead of negative one zero two, but mm. so in decimal you got one two three four five. And ternary would be 1, 2, 10, which is just 1, 0, oh, and then 11, and then 12. Whereas binary is 1, 10, 11, 100, and 101. Okay. So you get savings on it, but there's just a lot more complexity added to it, and so it's not really worth it normally. So yeah, numbers. Yay. Science. All right. So we just wrap up the podcast. Okay. The famous last words. Uh, if you want coloring and you like Scooby Doo, get the Scooby Doo party pack, or just like look at it and only print off the things you want because uh, there's 44 pages. <laughs> Ruby, Ruby, Ruby.